These are craft paints. These are not. Recently I did a review of these paints which I purchased on Amazon for about 70 cents per ounce. These were 50 cents per ounce except for the metallic which is about 80 cents per ounce. A lot of the comments I got were how do these paints stack up against traditional craft paints. So the only way I can figure that out is to put them head to head. So I selected five colors from my paints and then tried to select the closest color I could get with Craftsmart. So we have violet purple, sky blue, silver, sand, and titanium white. And we're gonna do two separate paintings and compare the two. All right, to start this test, I'm doing the exact same pouring medium, two parts of my glue which is Craft Smart White Glue, 70% glue, 30% water. So two parts of that to one part of paint, 20 grams of glue, 10 grams of paint. So already you can see the difference between the My Paints and the Craft Paint. Look how liquidy the Craft Paint is versus the My Paints. Look how, you, I mean, you can see it there on top and this has already started breaking up. So that's a big difference already. Uh, and all of them are the same. You have the big thick paints in here and then the really watery paints on this side. And most of them have already started to break up, which is very interesting. So we're gonna mix all of these up. Then we'll see how much water I need to add to get them to the right consistency. I have a feeling I'm gonna need to add almost no water to this. I'm gonna need to add five grams or so of water to this. That's my assumption so far. Let's see what it takes. So I haven't put any water in yet, but I wanted to show you from, a si from the side what this looks like, what the consistency of this looks like. So this is the craft white. See how there's barely a mound? And this was the thinnest of all of them. So this is the one I'm gonna make everything similar to. And then this is the sky blue from the My Paints. I mean, you can see how much thicker it is. I'm gonna have to add a bunch of water to that. All right, so I have the drip test done. Craft paint, my paints, and now we're gonna see how they... And now we know I need a little bit more water for the white craft, and then for all four of these to get them closer to the rest. So let's do that and I'll come back. All right, so now my paints are all about the same consistency. I wanna show you something. I added almost no water to this. Really only the white got a little extra water. So let me just show you. If I put that up on my scale, 177 total grams. If I do the same thing for the my paints, because they were higher density, or because they were uh, heavy body, I had to use more paint or more water to get them to the same consistency, still have nice colors, 215 grams. That means I added 40 grams, that's 20% more volume of paint that I got than I did with this. So already these being 70 cents per ounce and these being 50 cents per ounce, I almost, I almost make that up already just with the amount of water I have to use to get the same consistency as if I would have used for craft paint. So right there, without anything else, these are just as good a value as craft paint. And now if the colors are better, then this is way better. So let's do some paintings with each of these colors. All right, because generally I love to do straight, or straight pours, or tree ring pours. This time I'm gonna do a little different and we are going to do a flip cup pour. So we're gonna add all of the colors into here. I'm gonna start with white and then pour, mix pour all of the different colors in um, rather than stacking them on top of each other. And let's see how that turns out. So again, this is the My Paints, this is the Craft. And we're gonna start with the My Paints. Um, one part paint, two parts flow trail, two parts, my glue mixture plus a little bit of water means this is gonna be a little bit more than five ounces. 
And so I'm not gonna use quite all of it, but on these cups, I'm gonna use all of it. Now we're gonna do the same for the craft. So let me just put my paints in the right order. This time we're gonna do all of it. All right, so now I have the same paints in each. I'm gonna flip this one and then give this one a second so it gets to settle the same amount of time and then flip this one. All right, so I'm gonna move these each up. We're gonna flip in this way. As always, I like to hit the corners. All right, I'm gonna do one at a time. Give them the same torch. All right, so one cool interaction already is the silver seems to be a cell creator, which isn't uncommon for craft paint to do that. Now we'll give it a second to sit and come back and do a close up. All right, I have to say this may be one of the most unexpected things I've ever had happen to me with the test that I've done. I have never had great luck with craft paint. A little bit, but never great. And I was not expecting this. What is going on here? I gotta do some more testing because if this is the silver or maybe it's the combination of the colors that I used, but my goodness, look at this. Cells inside of cells. Now one thing I worried about is this just keeps growing and growing and growing and I'm worried that it's gonna grow itself out to a big puddle of mush. But as of right now, that is beautiful and the, my paints didn't turn out near as well, which is interesting because the test that I did yesterday is this one, and I got some great colors. Sorry, not yesterday, this last week. I got some great colors there, but with the flip cup, it did not work near as well. Now, the big difference is this is CraftSmart glue, and that other pour was Floetrol. So I'm going to have to test. Maybe it's it, this just reacts really well with the Craftsmart glue where the um, my paints does not react with the Craftsmart glue. And man, when that happens, that's a rough one to test because every every pouring medium could be different. As of right now, if you're do if you have Craftsmart paint and you have Craftsmart glue and doing the 70 30, two parts glue, one part paint and using a metallic, wow, great results. Again, very unexpected. I'm gonna have to do more testing. All right, I didn't get near the reaction I was expecting from these, so I'm gonna use the rest of the extra paint that I have to do a little bit of ribbon to see if we can't give it some character. 
I just added all the rest of the colors in the same way they were done before. Get a little bit of a mix. Maybe I just do a straight pour in the middle. All right, those results I love so much better. This one's been drying for about an hour. Just so many great cells, cells upon cells. It's beautiful, I love it. And the cells didn't disappear like I was afraid of. And then I did redid the pour and this one looks so much better. So those colors, this medium, they don't really do well for a flip cup but for a straight pour works great and I'm gonna have like I said before I'm gonna have to do a lot more testing with this because some of the interactions I got there were fantastic which I've never seen before